Louder. Shout hallelujah! Welcome to church this morning. It's an amazing morning to give God some praise. It's the first Sunday of December in the year 2020. The year that has been both long and short at the same time. Well, we have so much to be thankful to God for. And if it's your first time being in church since last Sunday, you have missed a lot. This week has been power packed, praise packed. We have had five days of praise. And the theme has been feasting in the palace of praise, and what a feast it has been. <sighs> if you've missed any of those days, we invite you to join us on YouTube. Um, we have a playlist titled Feasting in the pa Palace of Praise, and you can find all the days you've missed so far. And even if you were here, it's always a good idea to get a praise break while you're at work. So just play it in the background while you work and praise God. And if you enjoy any of them extra, share them as well so that other people can be invited to join us to praise God. Today is another day of praise. It's a super praise Sunday, so it's all praise again today. So um, get ready to dance and praise God with us. I'd like to invite you now to please stand as we say the opening prayer. Thank you, God, for this awesome day. Thank you for another day to praise you. We thank you that we're here, we're alive. We don't take that for granted. We thank you for good health. We thank you for sound mind. We thank you for all those things that you have given to us that we don't often think of as big deals. We give you all the glory and all the honor and all the adoration. We thank you for another day in your presence this morning. We pray that as we worship you today, that you would accept our praise, you would accept our worship, that it will be a sweet turning sound to you. We pray for the higher as the same God. We pray that you would, that your spirit will, will be upon them, that you don't just sing in their own strength, but that God will be here with us as we praise you. We pray for everyone who's come here with heavy hearts. We pray that you will lift every burden. That as we lead, as we worship you, we will breathe out your praise and breathe in your peace in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you for answered prayers. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Welcome to Session 42. 
Hallelujah. Good morning, church. Um, look to your left, to your right, and say good morning to someone. Say you're welcome to church. It's nice to see you. We're going to start with our hymn, All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name. Amen. of the Lord this morning because he is good and his mercies endure forever. Um, get ready to praise the Lord. Forget your problems at the door. You're at the master. You're at the feet of the master. You're at the presence of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And God is the one that made you. And the God that made you knows what you need and he will take care of you. So leave your problems at the door and worship him. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Thank you, Lord. You're greatly, you're great and greatly to be praised. You're wonderful, Lord. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, let your name be praised, Jehovah. We bless you this morning. Thank you, Jesus. It's a privilege to worship you, Lord, maker of all universe. It's an honor just to stand before you, holy, holy, almighty. It's a privilege to worship you, maker of all believers. It's an honor just to stand before you. With a grateful heart, I lift my hands to you, proclaiming Lord, you reign. Be 
your lips this morning. I want you to say good things to him even before we begin to worship again. I want you to tell him how much he means to you. I want you to worship him from the depth of your heart because he is the king of glory. <laughs> you know, I was listening to a message some time ago and this pastor said, imagine a God that created the whole universe. Not just the universe, the multiverse. And we're just one of the um, um, things that God created. We're among one of the, the, the many things that God created. If God created the whole universe, how much is your rent? If God created the whole universe, how much is your school fees? If God created the universe, what does it take him to settle your case? I want you to worship him from the depth of your heart this morning. Because what you have in your heart for God to do is infinitesimal. He is the king of kings. He is powerful. There is absolutely nothing he can do. What God can't do does not exist. So I want you to worship him with that understanding this morning. If what you have in your heart is not letting you worship God, remove it. Put it aside, lay it aside. Because he's here to help you. He's here to bless you. He's here to fight for you and he will come through for you. In the name of Jesus. Down. At your feet, oh Lord, hey, is the most I place in your presence, Lord. I see your face. Ay, 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 ay. I seek your
glory and embrace by your mercy, oh Lord. Lord, I live, I live to worship you. Lord, I'm amazed at your glory and reign by your mercy, oh Lord. I live to worship you. By your glory, I'm embraced by your mercy, oh Lord, I live to worship you, sing, oh Lord, I live to worship you, for the rest of my life, oh Lord. I live to worship you. No matter what the situation is, oh Lord, I live to worship you. It doesn't matter what I'm facing right now, oh Lord, I live to worship you. No matter what the doctor says, oh Lord. Uh, few seconds to tell him how much he means to you. Lord, you mean more than life to us. We live to worship you. You're the reason why we live. We praise you, Lord. We live to worship you, Lord. We live to worship you, Lord. We live to worship you, Lord. Thank you, King of Glory. Thank you, Lord of Lords. In Jesus' name, we've worshipped. Amen. If you're grateful to be alive and grateful to be here, raise your voices, put your hands together, and celebrate the King of Kings. Lord, we honor you. We honor you. Amen. Thank you. It's good to see you in church. For online uh, viewers, thank you for tuning in. Um, the next couple of minutes, I'll be going through a short a review of the book of Ecclesiastes. So the book of the month for this month, December, is Ecclesiastes. Just a show of hands. How many people have uh, started on that? Okay. So a few hands. Um, so, yeah. Decem today is December 5th. Yeah, you can, you, can, you can catch up today. Or you can start today. Okay. So the book of Ecclesiastes. Um, it's a it's very interesting book. Interesting read. Um, in the first chapter, it tells us that the writer, the writer was said, I was the king of Israel and the son of David, right? Which, um, which pretty much tells us that the, 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 the writer of this book is Solomon. It implies that King Solomon was the writer. Now, this book was likely written in the later part of his life. And the reason I say that is he, he was... The writer was always narrating experiences from the past. So he was saying, this is what I did. He talked about his accomplishments. He talked about what he had seen in life, which suggests that he was writing at the later part of his life. So most likely while he was still king, because he was king till he died, uh, but, but he was old. Now, what do we know about Solomon? 
Let me just jog our memory a little bit. King Solomon, he was the son of David, right? David put him on the throne to, to lead Israel, right? And then before David um, died, David gave him certain instructions. Do this, do this, do this, do this, do this. And guess what? Solomon did all of it to the letter. David even told him, kill this person, kill this person, remove this person. He did all of that to the letter. He was diligent and he was faithful to God, right? Then he, David also empowered him and instructed him to build a temple, which he did. He built a temple for God. And then he built a palace. And he, everyone was talking about Solomon. This guy is so diligent. No, God asked him. He, he, he went to offer a thousand bunch of friends to God. And God was like, wow, I like this guy's heart. He has a heart of sacrifice. God asked him, you know, tell me anything. Ask for anything and I'll do it. And then Solomon asked for wisdom to rule God's people. He, has a, he had a heart for service. And God was like, hmm, this guy, I like that. Because you didn't ask for wealth or you didn't ask for selfish things, I will give you the wisdom you asked for to rule your people. And I will also empower you with wealth. And God did that. So, what we know about David, or what we know about Solomon, is that he derailed at some point. He got entangled with strange women, strange things, and that made him derail from God. Now, to understand the book of Ecclesiastes, you have to look at the perspective of the writer. What place was he writing from? He was writing from a place of, he was endowed with wisdom, right? But... He lacked one thing. He lacked the major thing, which was fellowship with God. The Bible tells us that he didn't work with God later on. So he was away from fellowship with God. So when you read this book, have that mindset because it will tell a lot. So I'll go through the chapters. Chapter 1, he now says, everything is meaningless. So before I used to wonder, why would you say that? Why would you say that? Now I understand. Everything is meaningless. He had wisdom, he had wealth, he had, he, had, he had accomplishments and everything. But he lacked one thing, the major thing. And lacking and, ha- and, and not having that fellowship with God, everything else is meaningless. He said, you toil, work, 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 work. At the end of the day, you die. You lay down on your caskets and you can't take all the things you learned or you, or you earned to heaven or, or to the next, to the afterlife. He said, everything is meaningless. What's the point of working hard? And, and, and toiling. There is nothing new. He talked about there's nothing new under the sun. He said, that's wisdom too. Everything that has been done, everything that is done today has been done in the past. In chapter 2, he talked about the pleasures of life. Meaningless. Hmm, I see why. I see why. Because he lacked the most important thing. In chapter 3, which is the last chapter I'm going to stop at, he talked about various times and seasons. There is winter, summer. There's rain, and uh, there is there's sun. And all those different things. So he, he still had that wisdom. The Bible says the, gift, the giftings and callings of God, they're without repentance. So despite the fact that he was away from fellowship with God, he was still a man of wisdom. So we can still read this book because there's a lot of practical, practical wisdom. In conclusion, the writer of this book discusses facts of life from his personal experiences. He points to the fact that our world is fractured, but he fails to talk about God's attempt to repair our world. And I understand why. Because he just didn't have a relationship with God. So he was writing from a place of wisdom, but writing from a place of the absence of a relationship with God. And that's what we see. So the facts outlined in chapters 1 to 3 have to be subject to the truth of God's word in the gospel and in the epistles, in order for it to apply to us as born-again believers. So, we can read the book, we can get practical wisdom, but the facts have to be subject, have to be checked against the Word of God in the gospel and the epistles. Amen? I'd like to invite Mr. Ibukun to take us to the next section of the service. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. This is that time when we get to worship God with our offerings and our tithe. And I want to encourage you to please give from a place or from a recognition that all we have, we got also from God. 
And when I give personally, I like to have these three points always followed. The first one is the fact that God loves a cheerful giver. So however painful the situation might be with us at the moment, we know that God loves us. And he wants us to give cheerfully. The second point is that he wants us to give generously. He wants us to give from the position of the wealth he has blessed us with. And the third point has to do with sacrifice. Jesus Christ called the attention of the disciples to the widow that gave us two mites. Because of her sacrifice, she was given all. Those three things matter to God. Let's give cheerfully, let's give generously, and let's give sacrificially. Let's also remember to bring our tithes to God, 10% of our income. That is the system of God. God says he will open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing upon us. That's his way of showing us that we are still with him and he is the one blessing us. In addition to this, we need to also let us be aware that between now and the 20th of December, we'll be collecting missions offering. Now, there are many ways we can give towards mission. You could say you are going to pray or you are going to go by yourself as a missionary. But if you cannot do all the things, you can give. And when we give, we become partners with those that are there in the field. And as a result, also partakers of the blessings they get. Now, within this church, our focus is currently on Kenya, where we are building a school. You can agree, you'll agree with me that the school that is being built there will ensure that education continues in that land. And with education comes light. And as a result, because we are putting infrastructure there, hundreds, thousands maybe, will get to know about God. And this will go on and on and on and on. So I want to encourage you to please give. So the whole of this month will be given to missions. Um, please, when you do give, please indicate very clearly, this is for missions, this is for tight, as the case may be. I'd like to invite the choir to please give us a few songs of worship, and then afterwards we can pray. You are Alpha and Omega. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to. Various ways by which we can give. 
either with the app on our website, text to give, especially for those that are joining us online. We appreciate your presence. Let us pray. Mighty God, we thank you for the opportunity to give. We thank you, O Lord, because you have given us much more that we can ever give back. You've given us your son. We thank you, O Lord, for the blood that was shed for us. We thank you, O Lord, because you have blessed us beyond our thoughts and imagination. Thank you, O Lord, Jehovah, because you are our sustainer, our provider. We thank you, O Lord, because you continue to be there for us through thick and thin. Father, we say be exalted. We ask, O Lord, that you accept our worship offering, our tithes, and our mission offering today in the name of Jesus. We pray also, O Lord, that from the place where we have brought this, Father, we will never lack. In the name of Jesus, our source will never dry up. In Jesus' name, we pray. In a few minutes, we will have a video clip from Compassion Canada. Um, they are a group that has been sponsoring us for some time now in this Breakfast program. I want us to please uh, look at the video and be moved and be impressed by what these people do and hopefully also contribute to their cause. Covid va, va seul longtemps. Et quand il y a un nombre de vieux, alors qu'un boy de vieux la vie là. Wisdom était en bonne santé, il était joyeux, il s'amusait subitement, il est tombé et ses parents l'ont conduit. Pas lui beaucoup on avait les défunés. Nous aussi, nous ne baissons pas la, la, les bras pour la vie des, de nos bénéficiaires, pour aller payer les vivres pour ces enfants. Compassion a impacté beaucoup de gens. Compassion, Today is all about missions, evangelism, and reaching out to the world for Jesus. So, I'm here because evangelism is on the focus. Is it my slides here? Yes, so we all know what evangelism is, right? Evangelism is that simple message of telling somebody about Jesus, whether it's the complex eschatology of Paul, you know, talking about life after death, or simply that man by the well telling people, come see a man as has ever has told me all that I've ever done. We simply want to let people accept Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior. So I don't know whether you know this. I have some news to share with you. I have to tell you that some of those news will be heartbreaking, but please stay with me because I have good news at the end of it all. Religious beliefs are declining in Canada. Back in 2000, 70% of Canadians would tell you that their religious beliefs were important to them. As of 2017, only 49%, less than half of that, was still the same. Canada is fast becoming a um, godless nation. 26% reject religion outrightly, whereas 40% are ambivalent about religion. 
Churches are closing up for sale all over the place very frequently. Churches are supposed to be testament to let us know that the foundation of this nation was built on Jesus. Yes, they are being sold up to secular organizations that have nothing to show, that, that have nothing to give, you know, for people's spiritual well-being. Did you know that a survey showed that one in 20 of every of our 10th graders, those little children are using illicit drugs. By the time they get to 12th grade, it's one in every, it's three in every classroom. 30 in every 1,000 girls between 15 and 70 years old are pregnant. And we are having 300 and, 300, between 250 and 300 babies being born and being, uh, pregnancies rather, being aborted every time, every day in Canada. 37% of our youth will report that they've been engaged in tech, them kind of delinquent activity, whether it's violence to property or violence to persons. Suicide rates between 10 and 24 year olds in Canada is very high. Canadian divorce, which is already at 38%, is, is about, um, projected to even increase post-COVID. But we can change the trend. The word of God says, behold, I bring you glad tidings of great joy, goodwill to all men and peace on earth. So there's a lot that we can do as children of God. God, Jesus was not indifferent to the plight of the sovereign world. He gave his son to die because of, the, because of the world. We also can go out there and tell that world about Jesus. So this is what a secular organization, the United Nations, says about faith-based organizations, about the church. It says, understanding the key role that faith-based organizations play at the global, regional, and local levels, the UN environment supports the UN-wide task force on religion and development. The UN environment is taking the lead in, est in establishing relationship and partnership with gospel-based, or rather, faith-based organizations to deliver on an agenda 2030. The world believes that, Christ, um, that the church has a solution. Do we believe it? The, church, the world is ready to work with us. Are we ready as a church? Did you know that Christians give twice as much and volunteer twice as much as non-Christians? It means that if we want social services to continue, we want welfare to continue, then the church must rise up. We can change that man begging by the road to become a giver and a breadwinner. We can help that lady that is smoking there to become a speaker of nation, for nations for Christ. We can help this little child to learn to love the Lord. We can help this family in conflict to become a glorious family that will serve the Lord. And most importantly, we can help people that are on their way to hell to have a turn around and be, and be able to be kept. So at our church, we believe in the mission of Jesus. I said, go here into the world and make disciples of all nations, teaching them to observe all that I've commanded you. We have so many outreaches. We have outreaches to homes, to shelters, to prisons, to public places, even corporate organizations. During um, festivals, city festivals, community festivals, such as Super Club, we go out there and we reach out, we reach out to the world for Jesus. There's active evangelism during our tax clinic, during food banks, um, during theaters. Every program that the, every community outreach that the church does, there's an avenue for evangelism through it. We have visitations, potluck, food shows. And then also, we are training and encourage people on one-on-one -on -one evangelism to reach your friend, your neighbor, your colleague. That one that you see every day is here. It, you can tell them about Jesus. And then we also want to blast the gear with the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. You can do it online as well. So, I love this quote by our pastor, and he says, You may ask me, what is my purpose? It is simple. Love God, love others, go to maturity, serve God by selling, serving others, and tell others about God. So, I would declare on call to us is this. The Lord is asking, who will go for us? Who shall I send? Are you willing today to say, here I am, Lord, send me. If you hide, can see us Thank you so much for this week. God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We celebrate the God of the nations, the one that has said, go and make disciples. Thank you very much, Dr. Tinuke. If, you're, if you would love to join the evangelism arm or ministry of the church, Please see her immediately after service, like we've been told. This Sunday, is, I mean, you could say it's about missions. We've talked about the fact that we're receiving offering towards the project we're working on. Um, if you're joining or worshiping with us online, please, you may send in your donation as well towards mission. And if you'd love to be a part of our evangelism uh, ministry, consider sending a message in so that you may be contacted when there are outreaches going on in the church. Today is uh, Thanksgiving Sunday, 
And it's a tradition in the house. Every first Sunday of the month, we celebrate the faithfulness of God. We mark out the first Sunday of the month as an opportunity for us to say thank you to the Lord. The Lord has been gracious. He has been merciful. He has been forgiven. Some of us, the things we have done during the course of this year, if it were to be to a man, man would have de dealt with you mercilessly. But you have enjoyed the mercies of God. And so we're here today to say thank you unto him. And if you have also observed, as worship service this morning has been altered because it's Super Praise Sunday. So on the Super Praise Sunday, we celebrate God, we sing a lot. That's why it looks as if we sang more than two or three songs. I think we sang about three during our praise worship rather than two, just to say thank you to the Lord. And we're also trying to limit, be mindful of the restrictions we have regarding all that we have going on in our world, COVID. But at this time, we're going to have a special Thanksgiving celebration. And this is in continuation of what has been going on in the church in the last six days. Um, today is December 6th. Tomorrow is the 7th, which is the last day of our program. How many people have had an opportunity to be a part of Breakforth Conference thus far? If you have been a part of it, please shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because I believe the Lord is working on the situation. The Lord is taking care of it. We are believing God to break forth. We've had a lot of lockdown and restrictions. But in the spirit, we're breaking forth Amen. to the glory of God in Jesus' name. And so it's time for Thanksgiving. But I want to challenge us. Don't just give thanks. Give unto the Lord as well. It's thanks and giving. As you thank God, you give as well. What do you give? You can give your dance. You can clap. You can smile. But also, you can give an offering. Seal that blessing. Seal that miracle with a gift unto the Lord this morning. You know, Anna was speaking in 1 Samuel chapter 2. Talking about the acts of God. Time will not permit me to read it because I want us to have time to celebrate God this morning. The Lord takes the poor out of the dunghill. Some of us here, we have been reaching out. Reaching off. God brought us out. Some of us, it looked as if the year was very cloudy, but you're still standing. Some of us, the yeah, opportunity came for you to lose your job, but in, instead you got promotion. Some doors were slammed in your face. Some got jobs without interview. Favor has been on your side. So that's why you're going to dance and celebrate God. And also give. Give a good offering. Now, before I go, Pastor is going to pray on our offering once, we're done, when, once that is done. But I want to challenge you. Do you love the choir? Do you love this choir? Celebrate them if you do. They do a great job. Yes, Restoration Voices, they do a great job. They do a great job. So please tell your neighbor, don't waste their effort. And by that, I mean when they are singing, I want you to make them feel good in the sense that you're singing, you're dancing, you're celebrating. Celebrating God. So celebrate God this morning. And the Lord God of heaven will come through for you in Jesus' name. Amen. Choir, over Hallelujah. Can you please rise as we praise God this morning? Jehovah, you are so good. 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 Jehovah, you are so kind. Jehovah, you are so kind. Jehovah, you are so good. You are so good. Jehovah, 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 you are so good. Let me see you dance to the King of Kings. Amen.
said be your name Lord, you are so good
your thanksgiving offering. May God surprise you pleasantly in the coming days. May his visitation last for many generations in your life. Thank you, Father. We give you all the glory, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Please be seated just for a few more minutes. Uh, before we go into another video presentation we have for you, I want you to listen to this announcement. Registration for Sunday services is mandatory every week. People who do not register will be sent back as we are adhering strictly to the gathering capacity allowed by the Ontario government. Please register for only one service on Sunday. Then wearing your face marks throughout the service is required. And we only have one entry door and one exit door. You cannot interchange them. Our Sunday services continue at 9.30 a.m., which is an in-person service, and 11.15 a.m., in-person and online. And our children's online service starts at 1 p.m. Parents are encouraged to let their children watch the children's service online. The book of the month for December is the book of Ecclesiastics. As your pastor, I finished reading that book already. Our members are encouraged to also join the teleconference prayer every day at 5.30 p.m. Uh, today and tomorrow. Then from Tuesday, it will be from 6 p.m. throughout the month of December. The teleconference number is 289-769-8221. want you to note this number. We are praying. We have a prayer altar on a daily basis as a church for you till the end of the year. You need to know that the most important month of the year is the month of December. And you want to really possess the month. Amen. Your... Your, you will finish the year strong in Jesus' name. Come on, I say you'll finish this year strong in Jesus' name. All our newcomers, we encourage you to fill the card in the back, send it to you, and give them to the ushers. Our food bank is open on Tuesday, Fridays, and Sundays from 12 noon to 2 p.m. It is open to everyone. There are a lot of things you can find there. So it's also open to members of the church. Our community outreach program is on December 19. We are giving away free Christmas hampers to members of our community. Let's celebrate that. Let's celebrate that. So we have free Christmas hampers giveaway. And by the grace of God, we are going to give out minimum of 250 Christmas hampers to members of our community. We want you to register online. Advanced online registration is required. And we also want you to spread the word, to spread the flyer. We also want to remind you, like we've had today, that Sunday, December 20th, is our Power Sunday. I will be taking a special offering for missions. But you can give ahead of that. You can give from today. Then tomorrow is the last day of our Breakfast Conference. Have you really enjoyed it? Come on, let's appreciate God. Let's appreciate God. It's been an awesome time. We declared the first seven days of this month, you know, uh, praise to our God. Feasting in the Palace of Praise. Last night was wow, oh wow. The first night was wow, oh wow. Second night, wow, oh wow. Even third night was wonderful. Fourth night, wonderful. Hallelujah. And I'm sure tomorrow will be extraordinary. Amen. Because in this place, we are going to be giving God a shout. And every wall will be broken. And at the same time, we are going to be administering a communion of mercy. Hmm, you don't get that. I say a communion of mercy. 
and you want to partake in it. You know, uh, what God is doing, you know, there is this woman called Rahab in Jericho, a prostitute. Do you know Mercy found her and she was saved with her household? You know, she was saved from destruction. You too, you'll be saved. Come on, I say you'll be saved. Oh, from every impending danger, you'll be saved. Come on, from every form of destruction, you'll be saved. From every plague, you'll be saved. So I want you to come and partake in this communion, but you need to register, or you can join us online if you can't come in person. We have a video presentation, just a short clip, before we have a prophetic declaration. Hey, you guys, guess what? <laughs> guess the gist I just heard. Mm. Mary is pregnant. <laughs> what? what? Yes, eh? Mary is pregnant. The same Mary. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Which Mary? Which, which, which other Mary? It's the same Mary now. Uh. The holier than thou Mary that we all know. Yeah. Oh, my <laughs> God. So Joseph is ready to be a father then? Right. But that's not even the, that's not the gist. Joseph is not the father. Ah, it's a lie. It's a, I don't believe it. It's a lie. It's a lie. It's, a lie. It's, a lie. Yes. it's not the father. They actually said that she's pregnant with a baby called Holy Ghost. <laughs> Holy Ghost? <laughs> oh my God. Don't worry, they want to lie to us. Holy Ghost. Say the Holy Ghost came upon her and she became pregnant. Just huh? like that. Who, hey. In 2020. Are you joking? Oh, oh my God. I even thought Judas was the worst in our class. I never yeah, knew I Mary was so into uh, something. Uh, uh, you, have, you have come. You have come. <laughs> see, see. I know, I know I'm a bad guy. But <laughs> anyway, as a holy Judas. <laughs> yeah. If, if uh, Joseph is no longer interested, I can take over. Uh, can <laughs> you, uh, you, you will uh, never uh, change. <laughs> <laughs> but you, but no, but you people. Oh. I heard that um on twenty fourth of of this of this month, eh, yeah. is a naming ceremony. <laughs> they want to do naming ceremony, and it's going to happen in the church. In the ah. church, ah. who would come and watch? Ah, ah. I was sitting in front, come, though. Who would come and watch? Hey. Oh. <laughs> I must be there. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I'll come and sit in the front. Hmm. The deacons. The ministers, hmm, they will really disgrace her. Hmm. They will disgrace her big time. The big time. I cannot uh, wait to see her. Rebe, Rebe, I no, trust no, you. I know it's yeah. <laughs> I can't even say everybody ah. just come on the 24th of this <laughs> month. The naming ceremony is going to be one in time. <laughs> More than one. Yes. Do, so, oh, oh, oh. Professor, Professor, let's try it here. What is sir. going on here? Good morning, sir. Morning, morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Morning, sir. All's good about the money. Off your audio and, and put off your video. I'm not interested in seeing your faces. I want to share a screen. I want to share my screen with you. So we're going to be having our annual Christmas carol on December 24th. But it's going to be music and drama. And it will be streamed on Facebook and YouTube. So you don't need to come because of COVID restrictions. We want you to enjoy it at the comfort of your home. So it will be streamed on Facebook, Restoration House Hamilton, Facebook and Restoration House Hamilton YouTube. We want you to plug in at 7 p.m. December 24th, Virtual Christmas Carol 2020. Come on, let's give it up to our drama department. Come on, let's give it up to our drama department. Amen. I'm sure you cannot recognize Rebecca. I didn't recognize her. <laughs> I just recognized Leah now, and I was in the first service. <laughs> Come on, let's be on our feet. 
in Joshua 6, verses 13 and 14. Joshua 6, verses 13 and 14. Then seven priests, bearing seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark of the Lord, went on continually and blew with the trumpet. And the armed men went before them. But the rear guard came after the ark of the Lord, while the priests continued blowing the trumpet. Then verse 14. And the second day, they marched around the city once and returned to the camp. So they did six days. I prophesy into your life, your waiting period is over. Come on, your waiting period is over. I say your waiting period is over. This is your season. This is your time. Come on, it's your season to go forward. It's your season to possess the land. It's your season to conquer new territory. And the Lord will do it for you in the name of Jesus. The psalmist says in Psalm 40 verses 1 to 3, I cried on the Lord. The Lord will hear your cry. Oh, come on, with these six days of praise, the Lord has heard your cry. Every wall of Jericho will crumble into pieces. Every wall of Jericho will crumble into pieces. God will lift you out of that pit. God will lift you out of that miry clay. God will lift you out of that slopey slope. In the name of Jesus, your feet will no longer be slippery. Your feet will be established. In this land, you will be established. In this land, you will be established. In this land, you will enlarge. The Lord will enlarge your borders. The Lord will enlarge your heart. Come on, receive it, young man. The Lord will enlarge your territories. The Lord will enlarge your confession. The Lord will strengthen your stakes. The Lord will lengthen your cords. The Lord will stretch out the curtains of your habitations. In the name of Jesus. From this day, go forward. From this day, cross that line. From this day, break that barriers. Every obstruction, every barrier, every inhibition in your pathway of progress, the Lord will level them right now. The Lord will remove them right now. In the name of Jesus. In night season, the Lord showed me a man trying to make a headway, but forces preventing him. Every force limiting your progress, limiting your limelight, limiting your rising up. I pray everyone will remove them today in the name of Jesus. I say everyone will remove them today in the name of Jesus. Everyone will remove them today in the name of Jesus. Oh, the Lord will advertise you. The Lord will promote you. The Lord will promote you. Grace will be released into your life. Grace will be released into your life. Grace of promotion. Grace of establishment. Grace of settlement. God will give you new strength. In the name of Jesus. And I decree a new song for you. A new song of victory. A new song of victory. In fact, I see you limping up. I see you leaping up. I see you with a victory dance. I see you celebrating goodness of God. Even in this land of the living, you will no longer be inhibited. You will no longer be limited. You will no longer be pushed back. You will no longer be pulled down. It's your season to reign. And heaven will showcase you in Jesus' name. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord shine his beautiful countenance upon you. May God give you peace. May God give you rest round about your border. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray you build your church. And the gate of hell shall not prevail. Lord, we appreciate you. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's share the grace together in fellowship. Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us now and forevermore.
surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Cheer up. Praise works. Keep rejoicing. Keep believing. God is working on your behalf. 